Even though they're generally safe, a lot of people get side effects from supplements. In this video, I want to talk about what you can do if it happens to you. I will be focusing mostly on vitamin and mineral supplements, but the tips and tricks that I will show you also apply to other types of supplements, like herbal supplements or amino acids. You will learn about the different types of supplement side effects, the most common causes of them, and my step-by-step -step protocol on how to fix them. Now, before we get started, why is this even a problem? Aren't supplements supposed to be basically side effect free? Unfortunately not. I can tell you from my own experience that when I started taking nutritional supplements, I almost instantly got side effects and this continued for a very long time. For example, one of the first supplements I took was zinc back in puberty because I had heard about the skin benefits of taking zinc supplements and I wanted to test if it helped with my acne. Unfortunately, it made my acne even worse and I couldn't figure out why because every resource online said that it would benefit my skin. Only years later did I really find out what was going on and was able to fix this. As I've talked to other people along the years and became a nutritionist myself, I really noticed that side effects from supplements are actually super common, but no one really talks about them. It's really hard to get some quality information on what is going on. For instance, some very common side effects from vitamin D supplements is fatigue or anything related to your muscles, so muscle twitching, or muscle weakness. Another common example would be heart palpitations from electrolyte supplements like magnesium and potassium. And I discuss both cases in separate videos. In this video, I want to take a general look at supplement side effects that is not geared towards one nutrient or supplement, but to side effects as a whole and what you can do when you don't know what's going on, but you're having side effects. The tips I'm about to share with you are things that I had to figure out for myself because, like I said before, there really aren't any good resources on this type of stuff and it leads a lot of people to abandon their supplement program because they don't know what to do and how to properly react when they get side effects. Okay, so to start off, what you need to know is that the side effects can really be anything. It can be headaches, it can be breaking out, it can be fatigue, it can be muscle spasms, stomach upset, I've had it all and I've seen it all in other people. So what do you do if you get these type of side effects after taking a vitamin or mineral supplement? Like I said before, that will be our main focus, but the general steps also apply to other types of supplements. The first and most important thing you should do before even supplementing is to get your nutrient levels tested correctly. A lot of people take supplements without even needing them. Vitamin D is a very popular example here because in my opinion, it's very overhyped at the moment and a lot of people shouldn't be taking it either in high doses or they should be working on something else before taking vitamin D. So please figure out your nutrient levels with the proper test. I have a video on how to do that and only then start taking supplements tailored to your individual nutritional needs. This already rules out a lot of side effects because you're giving your body what it actually needs and what you should actually be taking. Okay, assuming that you already did that but are still getting side effects, you then want to ask yourself, are these side effects caused by the nutrient absorption or by the nutrient reaction? Every time you take in a nutrient, two things actually happen. You absorb the nutrient, so you swallow it and it then enters your GI tract after which it is absorbed into the bloodstream. And then the nutrient is used in your body for a biochemical process. So once the nutrient is in the bloodstream, it eventually lands in tissue where it reacts with other nutrients. Both processes can trigger side effects, but it's important that you know which one is the main cause. Let's start with side effects from nutrient absorption. And this happens fairly quickly after you take in the nutrient or the supplement. These are things like stomach upset, diarrhea, and nausea. Basically anything that signals to your body that your stomach is acting up. The solutions to this type of problem are actually fairly simple. You can one, try to take the supplement along with your normal meals. Then the nutrients that you're taking in through the supplement are incorporated into the chyme, which is your food stomach acid mix that makes it through your GI tract. That means the nutrient from the supplement will be absorbed along with the other nutrients in your food and it will also be absorbed a lot slower because your overall digestion is a lot slower when your body gets a lot of food instead of just one supplement. 
This usually makes supplements more tolerable if the side effects are caused by stomach reactions. And you can try this with any type of nutrient, even if the supplement says to take it on an empty stomach. Because yes, taking it with food will lower your overall digestion and absorption of the nutrient, because it often competes with other nutrients for absorption, but you will still take in some of it. And what matters in the end is not necessarily that you take in 100% of it, because that's what's causing the side effects, but that you tolerate the supplement. Another option to lower side effects from nutrient absorption is to try different forms of the same nutrient. For example, synthetic vitamin C in high doses, so ascorbic acid, often causes stomach upset. A lot of people have problems with it. Buffered or food-based vitamin C is usually more gentle and more people tolerate it. And food-based vitamin C also offers other advantages over synthetic vitamin C. I explain this in more detail in my video on how to take vitamin C correctly. One more thing I should say is that online you will find a lot of lists of supposed pros and cons of different types of supplements. This could be synthetic supplements, food-based supplements, chelated supplements, or liposomal supplements, for example. Now, often these lists will give you a definitive winner on what type is best. But to be honest, it really doesn't matter what the lists say. It matters what you tolerate, and this can be very individual. For example, for me, it took a lot of trial and error to find the best form of magnesium that my body tolerated. Okay, now that we talked about side effects from nutrient absorption, we also need to talk about side effects from nutrient reaction. And this is really any side effect that is triggered down the road when the nutrient reaches the tissue and sets off a chain of biochemical reactions. These type of side effects usually happen after you digested the nutrient. So there's a kind of a delay here. And it can be things like headaches, fatigue, anxiety, or muscle spasms. So anything that isn't related to your digestion and nutrient uptake. Fixing these type of side effects is a little more complicated than fixing side effects from nutrient absorption because you kind of have to understand the biochemistry behind a nutrient and what other cofactors and interacts within your body. Now I do my best to summarize the most important nutrient interactions in my videos, but if you want another place to start, I can recommend mineral balancing, which in my opinion is the most sophisticated system that explains how nutrients in your body are related and how they interact with each other. A common example of supplement side effects that are related to biochemistry is zinc. And I've mentioned this before. A lot of people actually break out or get anxious when they take zinc supplements. Now, how is this possible when so many people say that zinc is good for your skin and it's actually supposed to be a calming mineral? Well, if you understand what zinc can do in your body, then you also understand the side effects. You see, zinc pushes copper out of tissue because it's a copper antagonist. And copper is a very stimulating mineral that can lead to anxiety and in the wrong form. So if it's not bioavailable copper, it can also lead to skin problems. That's what happened to me back in puberty when I was taking zinc without knowing what was going on. And it led to all these side effects that I didn't like. So in this case, it wasn't actually the zinc that was causing all these things. It was the copper that was being pushed out by the zinc. So when you look at your side effects, really make sure you understand what the nutrient you're taking in is doing in your body and how it affects the cofactors in your body and other nutrients. Now, in general, there are two types of nutrient reaction side effects. One, they can be healing reactions, also called Herxheimer reactions. This is when things get worse before they get better. And the solution here is to usually stop the supplements for a few days and then restart with a lower dosage. Another nutrient reaction side effect is cofactor depletion. This happens if you take a supplement and get side effects because you're low in the supplement's cofactors. Remember how earlier in the video I said that I think vitamin D in its isolated form is somewhat overhyped nowadays? That's because a lot of people are low in vitamin D cofactors. This could be magnesium, it could be vitamin A, or it could be potassium. If they then take very high doses of isolated vitamin D, they will actually further deplete these cofactors. In such a case, obviously, you would want to increase your cofactors first. And this is also why nutrient testing is so important, because you probably won't figure it out by yourself. These are very complex cofactor systems and pretty much every nutrient interacts with every other nutrient in some way. 
Nutrient testing also helps if none of the tips I gave you so far help. Basically, what you want to do then is ask yourself, is there a nutrient or is there a way to improve my health without taking the supplements that I'm getting side effects from? Let me give you an example. A couple of years ago, I was diagnosed with pyroluria. It's a very controversial illness that I explain in more detail in a different video. The usual recommendation is to take zinc and vitamin B6 in the form of P5P. I did that and it gave me horrible side effects, especially the vitamin B6. When this happened, I was actually kind of angry with my practitioner because they told me to take things that I didn't tolerate. Further nutrient testing then revealed that pyroluria wasn't even my main issue. It was a copper imbalance together with low electrolytes. And these can be fixed without vitamin B6. So that's what I focused on and saw a lot of improvement with. Now, your situation will probably be very different, but what I'm trying to say is that there are many ways of fixing your nutrient imbalances, and if there is one nutrient that you absolutely don't tolerate, you usually don't have to take it. Okay, that's basically it for the video. Let me give you a quick summary of the most important steps that we covered in this video. First, always make sure to get your nutrient levels tested. Then figure out if the side effects are caused by nutrient absorption or nutrient reaction. If it comes from nutrient absorption, try different types of the nutrient or try taking it with food. And if it's from nutrient reaction, do your research and find out if you're dealing with a healing reaction or with cofactor depletion. In that case, either go with a lower dosage or focus on taking the necessary cofactors. I hope these tips helped you and I wish you all the best with your supplements. See you in the next video.